Hello, we're going to continue our series on the Fox Ridge Arms Custom Knife Making Kit. My name is Jonathan Chandler and I'm the owner and operator of Fox Ridge Arms. We've been making these kits for four or five years and selling them on Amazon. If you're interested in purchasing a kit, check us out on Amazon or look at the links below. Today we're going to show you how to mark out our pin, pin holes. Our pin material that we're going to use is this this uh, brass pin that comes in our kit. It's four inches long. We intend to cut it in half and we're going to make two pins with this. Um, our handle material is approximately an inch thick so you could you could do three or even four pins with this amount of, amount of pin material but uh, I generally suggest two if this particularly if this is your first knife you ever made. Two holes are a lot easier to line up than three holes and, and we would like our handle material to end about there so I'm going to take our marker here and we're just eyeballing it and we're just going to put us a little bit of a line on here. So we'd like our handle material to end somewhere in that region. <clears throat> I'm going to take out our tape measure and we're going to measure from the fattest part of the handle here, the, the tallest part of the round. You can use your standard tape measure to do this, <coughs> and but for the video, I think it'll show a little better if we use what is called an architect scale, and it's just a little triangular shaped um, ruler that uh, is used in drafting, and I like it in the videos, and because the numbers run right down to the to the metal so you can see what we're doing. It doesn't, doesn't bend up like a, the rulers do. The tape measure does. But anyway we're trying to get it on zero and then we're going to measure down to our line so we're looking at say roughly three and three quarters and so we're going to we're going to want to put in two pins so if you're putting in two pins, you got to divide by three. So we're looking at an inch and a quarter per pin. So we're going to come in here and we're going to just put us a little mark at an inch and a quarter. And we can come this way. That's three quarters. That's inches, inch and a quarter. And what's in the middle, if we've done this correctly, should be approximately, it's a little fatter than an inch and a quarter, but I think that'll do. We're an inch and a quarter from each end. Now let's try inch and a quarter again. Yeah, we're closer there. So we're gonna, and as long as this is close, this is not precise. We're not trying to hit Mars with a rocket or what have you. As long as it looks pretty close, nobody's gonna know. Nobody's gonna pull out a ruler on you and check this. But as, if you back up from it and you're looking at it and it looks fairly even, yeah, that's all you need. Ideally, when we're putting our marks on our metal, we would use something like a scratch all. We could put a fine line on it. But for the video, that doesn't show very good, so I'm using the big fat marker. Um, we've got our measurements this direction, like horizontal. Now we need to go the vertical direction this way. And to do that, I kind of do the old school finger trick where you, you place your... I'll do it with the pin stock so you can see. You place your finger up against the thing and you hold your pencil and you just draw a line using your finger as a guide. And so we'll try that. We're going to prepare our pin stock now. We're just going to take the ends and we're just going to sand them. This is the exact same little piece of paper I've been sanding the knife blade with. And all I'm doing is just rolling this little pin in my fingers and we're just going to sand it off. The way I cut these, these small ones, is I'll cut them with a big pair of uh, pliers. And when I do that, it kind of squishes it a little bit. Most of the kits that I send out have this already done to them. You can check yours and look at it, but I, I'm not perfect. Sometimes it slips by me. And so whenever you're using pen material of any kind, whether you get it from me or somebody else, when you cut it, whether you're using a saw 
or whether you're using a plier like I'm doing here with these little ones, it's going to manipulate the end in that it's going to be swollen usually or a burr on it or something. And so we want this to be smooth and more or less a round kind of end on it. Kind of imagine a something like a, a bullet's end. That's kind of the shape you're going for. So we're just going to try to get any, any burr off of it, any swelling off of it, and We're showing you old school how to pick out the drill bit. Basically, you take what you're trying to find a drill bit for and you remove the drill bits and you put the drill, whatever you're trying to find the drill bit for, in our case, a pin stock. You put it in the hole until you cannot find it, will not go down in the hole. That one is sticking in the hole, so we don't want that. So that's the last one. And this is the this is the drill bit we want. This is one eighth of a inch drill bit. <coughs> if you're unsure of your drill bit size, if you're thinking this is the right one, but you're not a hundred percent sure, take any block of wood and drill a hole in it first. up and down a few times to clean the hole out to make sure you're getting an accurate hole and stick your pin material down in there and see if it wiggles this one doesn't hardly wiggle at all so that's that's what we want a very snug hole drilling our holes in our handle or in our metal here we're gonna use a center punch and we're gonna punch the center best we can of these marks and this is an important step this gives your drill bit a place to start. Uh, if you have a drill press vise, that's great. You can use that and that'll help it. But even with a vise with these little bits, it sometimes wants to wander, it wants to push around. If you give it a little start, a little uh, punch mark to start in, it drills much better. So we're going to do the best we can to hit the center of these. for a handle. We have gone over to our file and our sandpaper and we've knocked the burr off of the back side of this handle. When we drill holes a lot of times it'll raise a burr either on the front or the back or sometimes both. The important thing we're trying to do here is we're trying to keep our block of wood beyond the line that we drew. See we got our line still as long as we're beyond it, we're fine. We can always cut the wood just to exactly where we want it. We have give you plenty of wood. See, this end's got plenty of wood on it, so we can we can maneuver the knife around on it. If we have a flaw in the wood we don't like, a little knot or a check or something, I, I look at these pretty good, but sometimes it'll get by me. Um, and we're going to put our bit down in our hole and we're just going to check and make sure that we're beyond our line on this end and that top and bottom we are you know inside the block of wood and so once we get that we can cut this on If 
you can see the different color chips coming out, I'm all the way through into my bottom block of wood now, so I know I've gone through. At this point, we're going to blow the chips off, and we're going to stick our pin material in, our pin stock in that hole. And so we have our pin material, we just put our pin material through the hole that we just drilled. It doesn't have to fall through the hole, it was fairly snug going in the hole, that's what we want. Uh, we're going to use that as a guide. Well, again, we're looking at this back edge, making sure it's on the wood. We've already checked this first hole that our line that we're drawn, drawn that uh, we want our knife handle to end. The wood is beyond that, which is which is what we're wanting. We're just going to hold this up here and see if we can find the hole. There we go. And when we've let this down, we're just checking to make sure this is a critical hole. This one we can still, we can be a little sloppy as long as we're inside the block. This next one, we've got to make certain, certain that we're all the way in, all the way around. We're checking all this edge. We're checking all this edge. Make certain that we're inside that block. This is the point we can turn it and slide it a little bit if we need to. See, I just straightened that edge up a little bit. And that, that, all that will do is give me just a little bit less to file and sand on that side and a little more on this side where the finger grooves are. And so we're going to start drilling. <laughs> So at this point, we're going to go back and we're going to cut this off, smooth up the, both of the new ends that we'll have cut, and we'll put it in our pinhole here and check for fit. We may have to come back and run the drill bit through it a few times like I was doing there to, just to make sure that our hole is cleaned out good and that our pin, pin material will run through it. If you can use any kind of pliers, it'll cut metal you can use a hacksaw you can use your grinder um, where do I need to cut it off is another issue altogether so we're gonna push this down <clears throat> I like to leave my pin material a little long I don't want to cut, cut it off flush it's flush with this side so I'm gonna figure out where the middle of our pin is here we can measure that you can eyeball it um, not a critical thing. As long as we got enough sticking out here that we can get a hold of and pull out, and that, that we've got enough pin for the other side that we can get a hold of and pull out. And so that's what we're going to do. So I'm just going to eyeball it. We'll just use these old MIG pliers. And we'll just cut it off here and make sure we've got plenty on both sides. And so we're done with our pliers. We have two pins now. <clears throat> Each of the pins has got a burr on the end of it where I cut it with the pliers. So we're going to work on that next. Alright, we have our two pins polished up. We did run the drill bit up down in the holes with the drill press a few more times just to give it a little bit of a final cleaning out and we're going to put our knife blade back on here and look and see what we've got now the way I've got it on here right now does not look correct see it's on there crooked that would work if we had to have it that way but we've got our holes turned around some kind of which way here Looks better. Let's see the other one. There you go. That looks better. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to work on getting that to be uh, more obvious, I guess. And the reason is when we go to glue this thing together, we can't be putting glue on the wrong side. So you gotta you gotta have some method of getting this thing so you can tell what's what. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to take our big marker here again. And we're going to mark the outside edge of this. Uh, 
like that. Let's get us a mark on it. And we're going to put us a, a little tick mark where we think that handle should should end basically but for the time being I'm gonna cut it off probably straight so I'm gonna just give us a line down here pretty straight where I want to end on the bottom is what's really important because we don't want to go past our plunge line of course we want to leave a little blade beyond that a little handle beyond that I, I would say so how do you cut this out we can uh, and I suggest doing this as while it's still a whole block of wood. That's why I sent you a whole block of wood. Much easier to cut this out and get it to shape while it's a whole block of wood. You know, coping saw, hacksaw, whatever you got can cut off this. The rest of this, really, the reason this block is sized as it is, you can file that much if you choose to. Um, if you have access to a bandsaw or even a um, scroll saw, a little teeny saw blade that goes up and down um, by means all means use that uh, if you've got a power sander like a belt sander you could whip this out no problem um, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take our co coping saw and we're just going to cut this back side out here and we're going to cut it off straight across here and I may use a little square to make us a square line um, straight across this way and we may we'll see what the coping saw can do we may work on this little notch right there with the coping saw and then we're going to put it back and we're just going to whip that uh, out with a file the rest of it's close enough plenty to file or uh... all right we just got our block here clamped down with a with a block clamp and we're just going to take a couple of seconds here and we're just going to get us a little closer to the line. And most of the time I would teach you to cut with the saw up straight up and down like that. And But when we're cutting this round piece off, I want that saw blade to show where I'm going to cut next to the line. I don't want to cut into my line. And once we get that, then we can start we get that line established, then we can start up the main. And the main thing with a coping saw is be gentle. They're a very good little tool to use, and they cut really thick wood if you're gentle with it. Cut this whole piece out if we want to twist it. Want to cut all the way around with this piece. Okay. Be careful tilting. Tilting one way or the other. So, uh, when people use the coping saw, they want to tilt. And so that's generally why we tell you to go straight up and down like a sewing machine. It makes you less likely to tilt. Switch it over to this side. Saw. It's going to save you time with your rasp or your fire. 
We just want to stay off that line. Just want to stay off that line. Okay. And remember, we drew this line with a big fat marker, so even if we get to the line, we still got a little room. Uh, and that's what we're looking for. We don't want to get this cut out tight to this knife just yet. All right, so we're going to give us a mark here across. We're going to the square this time. We'll just give us a mark something like that. So that's our basic shape whipped out. I'm going to work on this finger groove just a little bit. And to be honest with you, perfectly honest, what we've done this far you could have done with your with your hacksaw. You would not have to get a coping saw. Coping saw just makes it just a little bit faster and a little bit easier. And a little more flexible if you have a curvy handle. Um, it would be a great boost in that portion. Um, at this point, you can switch over and you can do some other things too. You can take a pocket knife and whittle on these when you're going with the grain. Get the clamp out of the way. If you're going with the grain and you have a lot to remove, you can just take a pocket knife and, and, and carve it off, uh, minding that you don't go past the line. We don't have that much to do at this point. I am going to work on this finger notch a little bit because that'll give me a clue on how to put it back together. And so we're just going to do a tiny bit of that. All right, this little tool here is called a four in hand. This comes in lots of the little file roll up packs we was telling you about. And I generally save this one to do woodworking with. And it has <clears throat> very coarse teeth on two sides of it here and then a finer set of teeth on the other two sides and it is half round so that means it's got a round side that's smooth and a round side that's coarse and a flat side that's coarse and a flat side that's smooth so we can we can if we have a lot of wood to remove we can put the put this thing to work and we can really hold off a lot of wood at a time okay so that would be We want to keep this flat and straight, so we want to hold our... file, rasp, flat and straight with this. And I'm changing the angle that I'm going at. That will help me keep it flat and straight. If you've got a belt sander, it's always good, even if it's a handheld belt sander, sand this way for a little while, flip around and sand this way for a little while. You're a person that, that inherently pushes one way more than the other, front and back and left and right. So if you're switching around which, what you're doing, it keeps it from you know, affecting your project so much. And so we're going to do a little bit more. I have a few other things. Here's a, a very coarse half round rasp. It's just longer. It'll let me do more at one time. And a wood rasp certainly don't want to pull back with it on. Or a wood file of any kind. Don't pull back on against the wood. And so we're just switching back and forth a little bit. 
and we're trying not to tilt this. When we were filing the blade, we wanted to tilt, but now we're trying to be dead level with the floor. And we're working on our line. I know y'all can't see the line that's on my side. So we're gonna get down that fat line. We're gonna get down to where that fat line is touching our wood. Our wood is no longer above the fat. And then once you get close, you can switch over to a smoother file. This one no, by no means smooth, but it, it uh, is smoother than the rasp. And we can take long strokes and that will hopefully level any imperfections that we're putting in with that rasp. And again, switching the sides that we're going from will help that. And this will take out any of the rasp marks. You can see by the dust forming, this is working very quickly. Doesn't take a tremendous amount of time. A lot of folks are afraid of a file. If you file with sharp, filing ain't too bad. Okay, so I'll show you what we got there. We're down to our line near bouts. This side just slightly larger than but we're, we're touching the line here. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a few minutes and go ahead and finish that. In the finger well here, we'll use the, the half round portion. You can see that that works. Um, we'll just finish this up and we'll bring it back. All right, took us a few minutes. We went around there with the rasp and the file. And I just did the little finger trick where you put the marker on here, kind of like what we did with the knife blade itself or the handle itself. And just drew a line this way and then I flipped my block around and drew a line that way, not moving my finger. And that gives me the center of it. And we're going to put this in sticking proud of the vise as much as we can. we got to be careful. Our vise here has great big humongous teeth in it so we can't, we can't like crank down on this as much as we would like. Um, and we're just going to saw this out with the hacksaw doing best we can to keep it in the middle of those two lines get to a point where the saw will act like it's catching and that's what's happening as our jaws are pushing against it. So when that happens we got to get rid of the vise for a minute and I suggest you wear a glove if you're going to do this. And we've almost got this thing cut in half and it's already a good solid straight line in there so it's not as if we don't have something to go by. And so we're just going to do the last little bit By hand here. Like I said, we almost had it cut. And now, see, me squeezing it is stopping it from sawing, so I'm going to have to ease up squeezing on it. Alright, and there's our two pieces. And that's the two cut sides in there. They're relatively flat. 
they're pretty good. I mean, they're probably pretty good to do um, thickness wise. So, get on a flat surface. Pay attention to what side you're cutting too. I mean, this is the side we're going to cut. We're going to cut. We're going to sand. Pay attention to what side you're sanding. This is the inside. This is what we just cut with the saw. We want this to be perfectly flat and smooth. It's pretty good as it as it sits. It's got a couple little waves in it. We want to get those out. But what our goal is for these two pieces to fit right back together, flat and even, just as if we just as we cut. Them. So we're just going to take this piece of sandpaper and just on the edge of it here. And again, we're going to switch it around because we are human and it does push more on one side than the other. And that's about all we need to do. Um, we may have to do just slightly more. It's a little lump right there and a little lump right there. So we'll do just a smidge now. Knock out your sandpaper. Switch around again. All right, so we still have our paper intact. We used about this much of it to do that, and these are reasonable now. They're reasonable flat. We don't want to do too much because we want these things to stay flat and in line with each other. So we want to put it back together. This is kind of your first test to see how good the cut and sanded. And sometimes the holes get full of debris. Real bit back through the, the holes as we were cutting and sanding the holes got some debris in them and was kind of clogging up a little bit so we ran it back through. So now we're going to put both pins in and we're looking at this this edge now to see that there's no gap in it. And you want to look all the way around. If you've done a good job sawing and, and flattening with the sandpaper, they won't be a gap. And this this looks pretty good. It's a little harder to see with this big black line on there. You usually have to use a little bit lighter mark, but it looks pretty good. Um, and it's okay if we're slightly off left and right. The lines are our guide. We have plenty of material here. If you hold this in your hand at this point, it's still too big. For most people, that's going to be way, way too big a handle. So we're going to take and we're going to thin it down um, in a few minutes to, to make it fit our hand and contour it a little bit so it'll fit our hand better. But at this point, we're looking for fit of the two handles together and we can even put the blade in it at this point. Now that we have it contoured a little bit, we can, we can easily find where our blade fits back in instead of flipping it around over and over again. I like it when it comes to this stage because we can then see how it's going to look. And we've got our, we've still got choices. We can still, we haven't done anything to this front edge. We can, we can file, sand, grind, whatever we want to do on this front edge. We can, we can make it tip forward. That's usually what I do with this style of knife. We'll cut a corner off of it and make it kind of round forward a little bit. You can lay your finger on it and kind of look if you want to cut it straight or straight. That's the way I kind of judge things sometimes. What do I want to do? I'll put my finger up there and kind of look and see how what kind of arc I want. Um, you can take a piece of paper and trace this handle now and cut out different versions and, and poke some holes in it and you can set it down on here and see what you like. That's another option you can you can figure on it. Um, we The metal itself is still down inside here. It's not up here on the edge at any point. Um, it's not up on the edge at any point. Right there is the highest. But that's what we're wanting. We're wanting it down in there. We don't want this handle to fit perfectly yet. We want to glue this handle together prior to doing our final profile on the on the wood. Um, at this point, we're at the stage that I usually will heat, uh, heat treat our knife. We'll heat it up with the forge or with a um, bow torch. Or even with a campfire, you know, gas grill, gas stove, anything that's got a flame in it, um, 
this is very thin metal it will heat up nicely you don't even have to heat up the entire blade just about the top or the bottom half which is the thinnest and we we can do an edge quench not not an issue but it all right we're about to heat up our knife and and quench it in our oil we got to take our oil we also got our fire extinguisher here in case it goes bad we got our top for our tank that'll fit back on there and smother it um, we're in a well ventilated shop here it's a it's a barn basically um, I prefer to do this outside but it is again become nighttime happens happens every once in a while and we uh, it's a little bit of a rainstorm going on, so we can't. We don't want any water to get in our quench oil. That would be really bad. So we don't uh, we don't quench outside if it's raining. Um, but do get this into a well ventilated area. You don't want anything with a real low ceiling. Um, our ceilings in here are 14 feet high, um, and so we we we've got as much preparation as we can here. So we're just going to set this. Just a little farther back. All right, and we've got our propane torch. We may need to change bottles on this. Uh, this one's about empty, but we're going to give it a shot. We've got a magnet sitting right here on our vise that's holding our vise grips, that's holding our um, blade here. And we're going to heat up on the back side of this blade so you can see what's happening. And we're going to heat up the thick part of the blade. We're not concerned with the handle at all. We're just wanting the blade and particularly the edge to become non-magnetic. And that's why we have our magnet sitting right there. We can touch it on the magnet. As soon as it doesn't, it's not non-magnetic, we're going to quench it into the oil. See them on TV all the time. They'll jerk this thing back out and fly or fly everywhere. Not necessary. The idea of the quench is to cool it off, not to set your building on fire. And so we take it out. You can see if it's crooked or anything. And it looks straight as an arrow to me. So we're going to set it back down in there. And I try real hard not to hit the bottom of the quench tank. I don't want to hit the bottom of the quench tank. Alright, that's the sound we want to hear. Alright, so that's what we've got. what it looks like when it comes out to quench it's hard like that so we're going to hit it with a little carburetor cleaner you could use brake cleaner anything like that uh, degreaser something that's going to evaporate quickly is what we're after and not leave a residue Leave your glasses on for this. It can spray in your face and that one's not a fun, not a fun thing. And we can do this and we can, if you have a wire wheel, like a wire brush kind of deal, you can, you can hit it with that. Uh, get some of this stuff off.
the handle, I mean, I'm not that concerned with the color of it, but I don't want it to stink up my house, so that's why we clean it up as best we can. That's what it looks like after it comes off the wire wheel. Um, we just cleaned off that little bit of scale. Um, I have a wire wheel on a grinder, which is nice, but you can do the same thing with a, with a small wire wheel that attaches to a drill. You can get those at the cheap tool store for you know a dollar, two dollars. We're going to take it inside. I've got a little small pan that I don't do anything else. I don't cook food on it, but it's just a little small aluminum pan. Um, we, we put aluminum foil in it. I stick the knife in the pan, in the oven, then I turn the oven on to 415 and I bake it. I let the, you know, pay attention to when the oven gets up to temperature and I bake it for two hours. I cut the oven off. I don't open the door. I just let the oven cool off slowly overnight. 